Right, I think I'm gonna go after her then. The oh, I can't leave. Okay, never mind that then. Uh, Anders, what have you got to say about that? Brig, do you think Beth is upset with me? Um, I'm sure it's fine, Anders. Maybe. The sea air is hanging heavy these days. It'll pass. Everyone's nerves are just rattled. But it'll pass. Hmm. Well, the sooner the better. Let me talk to the bartender here. Oh, Sue, hun. Why you gotta worry me? Is everything between Sue and Beth okay, you think? Hmm. Let's just say Sue has a way of sometimes pushing people's buttons. Sometimes in the right way, sometimes in not in the not so right way. I'm sure everything will smooth over, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure too, hun. I hope so. Beth and Sue were getting a bit touchy there. Might have uh, needed the sheriff to step in. Uh, you really think that would have helped? Well, um, you know. God damn it. Well, I need something to do around here. Just seems like offering excessive policing is a bad idea. Oh, you're just full of opinions, aren't you? Don't take no mind, Frigg. We have our own backwards ecosystem here. Sorry, Clara, I didn't mean to come across as rude. Hmm. And uh, you two, what do you have to say? Did you know Yepe well? What, Captain Ginger? Yeah, sure. Who didn't? He brought me my new pants when I got pregnant. Yeah, Captain Ginger was alright in my book. He brought me my smokes. Wow. So he was really important to everyone on the, on the island then. I guess. I mean, no reason to get all mushy about it. And it feels the right time to get mushy? He did just die. We're at his wake? Yeah, but there's also free food and drinks. Ah. Well, okay then. I mean, it's, it's understandable. Again, everyone mourns in their own way, so you can be jolly or sad. Doesn't really matter. Well, who do I talk to? This guy? Hello, my dear. Nice of you to come. How are you faring? Well, the island is majestic, and everyone has been so kind. Well, almost everyone. But Yepe dying... That's been pretty tough, if I'm honest. Yes, yes, dreadful stuff with our dear old Yepe. Most tragic. We'll miss him. But if I know one thing, he'd want us to smile instead of frown. I don't know him for so long, but somehow that sounds right to me. Thanks, Mr. Boo. Please, just call me Mr. Boo. Uh, okay. Beth, I'm sorry I brought Freddy here. She just really wanted to see Yepe. For the last time, Anders. Yepe is dead. Freddy can't see Yepe anymore because he's dead. No one can see Yepe anymore because he's fucking dead. But Beth, we're all dead? Yepe will be walking around here somewhere. Maybe you forgot what he looked like? I do that a lot sometimes. We are not dead, Anders. This is not the goddamn fa afterlife. This isn't some story for you to run around and play in. This is my fucking life. But, but, no, no, not another word, Anders. Not another word. Hey, hey there. You two look like you could do with another beer. How about it, Beth? A drink? It's on me. Hmm, I guess. Uh, honestly, I don't think alcohol is going to do much help here. Anything to get away from this conversation. You too, Anders. Well, I suppose I do like beer. And uh, if you're dead, you can drink all the beer you want, I guess. You don't have a liver to worry about anymore. In fact, why don't I even pour beers for myself? Or even pour the beers myself? You know how to pour a beer? Yeah, mm, sure I do. Hmm. Well, okay, yeah, this I gotta see. Wait, what? Who's pouring what? Sorry, I panicked. Just thought something silly might change the mood. Well, it has taken the edge of the room. Okay, Han. Let me at least show you what you're doing. Alright, it's beer pouring time. Let's see how you get on. Tilt the glass if you want less foam. How do I tilt? Okay, here we go. Perfect. Uh, just even it out. Uh. There we go. Nice two fingers of foam. Deliver. Drinks up. Looks great. Thank you. Do that again. 
Oh, look at that. Perfect. It's almost like I worked at the bar. Uh, you can keep mine simple. What does that mean? Everyone has the same. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> That's an amazing head. Yeah, no, you don't have to tell me about it. <laughs> Might as well make a cheeky pint for myself. <laughs> All foam for me. <laughs> That's how I like it. There we go. <laughs> a little bit stingy. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get drunk again. Nice job there, hun. Well, gotta say, not too bad for a city girl. Thanks, Frig. Beer definitely tastes like beer. Pretty good diplomacy there, Frig. Thanks. Guess you can never go wrong with beer. <laughs> well, I'll well I'll drink to that. Alright, can I? Can't wait to sleep. Alright, there we go. Going home. We're not even pissed because we properly served us a drink. All good. Well, that wake was something else. Uh, not everyone seemed too sad about Yepe leaving, but you don't have to be sad. Uh, let's get into bed straight away. I don't see anything new around here, so call it a day. Ah, bedtime. Huh. Am I dreaming again? Hi, Frig. Frig! It's good to see you. We're going to draw parents at my house. Why don't you join us? Uh, sure? Or we're on a boat. How will we get to your... cave? Oh. Come and draw your parents with us, Fig. I, um... Well, it's just that I'm not so good at drawing. That's okay, Frig. Yeah. Why don't you tell us the story about them, then, instead? Yeah. Why don't you tell us what your mum and dad look are like? Stories help keep them close. Um, okay. Sure. Well, my mum... My mum, she's such a strong person. I mean, okay, yeah, she can sometimes be too strict, but she's also so deeply loving. I know she really cares about me, although she has a terrible sense of direction. We're always getting lost whenever she's taking us somewhere. But you know, she's so great and calm in an emergency. Just great at looking after people. She's my hero. She sounds like... She sounds really great, just like my mom. And what about your dad, Frigg? My dad? My dad is such a joker. He makes terrible jokes. He's always off in his own world. He's a total workaholic. But he's fun to be around. He has his warmth that can make anything seem better. Whenever I'm down, he knows exactly how to cheer, cheer me up. And, um... I, uh... Wow, I'm sorry. I just, um... I really miss them. I miss them both. We know how you feel, Frigg. We miss our parents too. But don't forget, Frigg. When we tell each other stories, the ones we miss, they can live on forever in our worlds. I'll never stop telling stories about my daddy. That way, I know he'll always be around. That's actually really sweet. Thanks to you both. I guess that's the point of the whole game, to... That's what they want to come across. The major... Theme. Can't forget people if you keep telling stories about them, I guess. Oh, my head. God. I was a mess in front of Freddy and Anders. Wait. That was a dream, right? Jeez. These beer dreams are screwing with me. Yeah, we gotta stop drinking the beer. Damn. Oh, there's another bottle. A new day, a new bottle message. I guess this is a thing now? So let's have a look. She is someone. I was working as a carpenter in Greenland. I was young at the time and it was my first winter in the BYGD, a small settlement in Greenland. How do you say that? Bigd? Big Bigd? All days were cold and dark and nothing like what I was used to back in Denmark. Oh, is this the guy? Is this whiskey a day guy? Uh, I was working all weekdays, maybe, maybe not, probably not, he was a carpenter, anyways. Uh, I was working all weekdays with almost no daylight. When I was hammering nails, the nails would stick to my glove because of the frost. I was constantly hungry. Every day I could easily eat a whole cake just after lunch to keep me warm and happy. I felt very alone. I was used to hanging out like with like-minded young people back home. We'd, we would be going to concerts and pubs each weekend and I always had someone to talk to. Here, I had no one. There were people around me, but no real friends. 
I even at some point drew my own imaginary Facebook feed. There was no internet to pretend stuff was happening. The people I spoke to were my colleagues, who were a team of about eight men. They had seen the world, but they all came from Denmark, and by the various roads of the world ended up here in a small, cold and windy BYGD on the west coast of Greenland. They were older than me and came from a different time and background. Each day we would all drive from each other of each of our construction sites and back to the barracks to have lunch together. I was mostly quiet while eating. I didn't know what to say and how to be a part of the conversation. They would occasionally speak about women in a way I felt uncomfortable with, but they were also the only people there that I could hang out with, so I never said anything against it. I probably would have today. One day during lunch they talked about a woman they called the goats. Oh god, is this the story of that creep guy? The creepy ass... Leroy, that's his name. Um, called They called the goats. They had all been with her, or pretended they had. I don't know if it was her job or if she just hooked up with them, but they all made fun of her as she had a handicap that made her sound like a goat during sex. I was especially silent that day and found their jokes and treatment of this person awful. Many months later I was on the plane back home to Copenhagen. I sat next to a young man like myself and we started talking. He worked in Denmark but he had just been back in Greenland to visit his mom. She was handicapped and needed help. Oh my god. Uh, she came from the same city and had the same handicap as a woman the man in the barracks had been talking about. I said nothing to the young man. I'm older now. I often think about this story. The next time, if ever, I'm in a room with people speaking about another person like this, I will say something. These people are real people and not just a story to tell for fun during lunch. Yeah, man. Shouldn't be- should be making fun of, of people behind their backs, you know? Just... That's how kids behave. Not adults. Alright, are we actually doing some work today? Probably... Probably not. <laughs> uh, let's have a look, shall we? I wonder if that story... I, I bet it's Leroy, one of these eight men. Oh, here's Jan. Morning there, Frigg. Uh, was just on my way to pick you up. Hope you're not feel, uh, feeling too fragile. Ready to do some work? Yes, definitely. Finally. A chance to do a proper day's work. Great. Well, we're gonna take a walk over to Mr. Boo's house. Oh? Okay, sure. Does he need work done? Hell, well, yeah. He's been pestering me for a while. Wants to look at his kitchen. Mr. Boo's house is a bit more flashy than the rest, so it's usually in need of a touch-up. Gosh, I guess it makes sense. He does seem a little fancy. If it's okay for me to stay, that would be putting it mildly. But he does have his reasons. Come on, we can walk and talk. Okay. We can jog and talk. Not doing much talk there, uh, Jan. Race you to the top! Oh, Jesus. Alright. Come on, legs. Why do I want them? The Nolan the Boo Manor, okay. You know, Mr. Boo's story is as much as about this island as it is his own. Let me tell you as we walk up. To understand Mr. Boo, you need to know about his pappy, the old brewer. You see, he was a wealthy merchant who became heavily invested in elk after the Great War. The old brewer set out to transform the islands. Our island, buying over the docks, opening a, opening a brewery, bringing in new homes, and even planning to build a railway bridge. And it wasn't just the island, the old brewer transformed his own life, getting married and gaining a son, our very own Mr. Boo. It would have been quite the happy tale. The problem was the old brewer treated both family and business the same, hard and cruel. He drove his wife away as the construction of his super bridge stalled. Years of frustration followed as the Mr. The old brewer became increasingly more foul, building a resentment for his son, Mr. Boo, burdening him with all of his father's hate. Poor Mr. Boo had to be endured, had to endure his father's spite, all because of his dad failed in business deals, dealings. Mr. Boo became trapped in the crippling ambition of the old brewer. But then suddenly one day the old brewer was dead. A heart attack took him and left Mr. Boo a free man. He inherited all of his father's belongings, but none of his dreams. So Mr. Boo closed down the brewery and all that came with it, escaping the shadow of his father. Both Mr. Boo and the island of Elk were free to start a new chapter. All, all is well. 
at the end. Uh, okay, wow. So Mr. Boo and his dad were a pretty big deal then. Well, that's one way to see it. The two of them had definitely left their mark on Elk. People blamed Mr. Boo for letting a lot of the business die out on the island. But to me, the man doesn't have a bad bone in his body. Wait. Is this his place? Sure is. Whoa. It's... It's huge. Well, yeah, the old brew wasn't one for subtlety. And wait, all these cars? Is that a fire truck? Um, Mr. Boo has developed a taste for collecting some certain oddities, as you can see. Does he drive all these? Honestly, I don't think that's the point of them. Then uh, what is the point of them? Good question. <laughs> just, a, uh, just a collection. Uh, doesn't need to be a... What, a cute car? He has Marina written on the license plate. Must be special. <laughs> Alright, um, let's have a look around the island. Maybe we can see something else. Doesn't seem... Doesn't seem like it's the case. Shall we just go in and fix his kitchen? Oh, he has a tractor as well, damn! This looks both awesome and unsafe in equal measure. Hell yeah. Give me a ride in the... I don't know, in the tool thing. In the spades. Oh, my dear Jan. And of course, you too, Frigg. So very happy you could swing by today. No problem, Mr. Boo. What can we do for you? First thing I want is for you to come in. Make yourselves at home. No need to get bogged down in the rigmar rigmarole of work so hastily. Let's have a cup of tea then first. There's so much to see. Your home is amazing, Mr. Boo. Well, thank you, my dear. I could tell when I first saw you that you were someone with impeccable taste. Oh, well, thanks. I'm very intuitive, you know. I have a nose for things. <clears throat> Mr. Boo, what about that work you need done? Oh, yes, just a moment, my dear Jan. I'm having a burst of inspiration. Frigg, have you ever played golf? Uh, no, I haven't. Is that bad? No, not at all. In fact, that's wonderful. Because I have uh, the privilege of introducing it to you. Oh, um, you want to introduce me to golf? Yes, exactly. Playing golf with one another is a fantastic opportunity. It's a game about meditation. It's a game about connecting. Why, it's the perfect chance to strike business deals. Business deals? Yes. So what do you say, Frigg? A round of golf? Uh, does he think I'm maybe some sort of business venture? It does sound fun. Uh, what do you think, Jan? Is it okay? You two go for it. I'll have a look around if that's okay with you, Mr. Boo. See if I can spot any of these fixings you need. Splendid! Come, Frigg, to the garden for some world-class golf. What the- he just leaves Jan's to figure out what's wrong with his stuff. Anyways, just put the ball in the hole and you're a winner. Okay. Seems like easy enough. Damn, that was very hardcore. Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, so close. Nice. Got a pair, power, birdie. I don't know what. I've never played the golf. Uh, looks like you're a natural freak. Yeah, thanks. Why is the arrow coming out of. What? What the hell? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, now we're playing with the... With the stick. Oh, we got one in. I think we have to put the stick in the hole, though. There we go. Wonderful! Oh dear, it appears some of my pappy's vintage beer has ended up on the course. Yeah, what do we do with them? Oh, they explode. Careful now, those hops are suddenly hopping. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Blended. Well, as my mummy would always say. Uh, what would she say? No use crying over broken glass. What? Oh, there's another. Holy shit, hold up. Oh, oh, hey, got it. Wonderful. Oh, what fun. Oh, now I'm playing with the... Ah, almost. 
Get out of my way! Oh, that was so close. Got it. As my friend Lee Carvalho would say, put it in power drive. Oh god. Alright, here goes nothing. Full burst. <laughs> A hole in one. It's time, Frig. Uh, for what? Jeez. Like the true golf masters, it's time to bring it all down. Got it. Splendid. Wonderful, Frig. You certainly played a good game, I must say. That was fun. It was also very different from what I was expecting. I like to think I have recreated the experience of golf rather perfectly here in my humble abode. I take these things very seriously, you know, Frig. Well, I'm very impressed. How was it? It was truly a spectacular event. One for the ages. Sorry you didn't partake, Jan. Uh, I'm just glad to hear you enjoyed yourselves. But if you don't mind, Mr. Boo, could we have a quick chat? Not at all, my dear. My ears are, are your very beck and call. Great, I appreciate it. Frig, I found a cupboard in the back that needs a bit of mending. I left my tools next to it. Do you mind taking a look? You can count on me. Thanks. We won't be long. I like that we are uh, an apprentice uh, carpenter, but uh, we actually aren't doing much learning here. Gelks, an evening at the opera. Sounds like there's a freaking lobster on fire. I think my mom has this album too. Uh, who is this? Oh, that's his dad. Oh, look at the face of her mom. Disappointed. This must be the Mr. Family? Yeah. Doesn't look that happy. What are these animals? Look like a llama, but I don't think they are. Oh, let me have a look at the, that painting, though. Bit scary. Caved Eyes by Murray Summerwolf. Sounds pretentious. Although that is a cool surname. Summerwolf? Summerwolf? Uh, where did he say I needed to go? Jesus, what the hell? Stay out. Damn. The hell is going on here? That fish. Oh wow, Mr. Boo owns an inglet? They are the coolest. The hell is that inglet? A very weird type of fish. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to be up here. This floor seems very well run down. Seems like it's where uh, Mr. Boo releases uh, releases all his uh, angst. Wow, an actually an actual working toilet on this island. Yeah, we don't have a toilet in our place actually. Wait, where was I supposed to go? Somewhere around. Ah, here we go. That's the cupboard. All right, let's make a quick work of this. Okay then, must be the cupboard. It's pretty bust up. Let's uh, see if I can fix it. Um, I can hear someone? We need to make some kind of mini game based on the story of uh, the frozen man from my dad. If we put Frigg in the situation where she has to carry uh, yet and we do that in a beautiful way where mm -hmm. Frigg sort of... Where Frigg is able to reflect up upon yet as mm -hmm. a person. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's actually pretty good because I think like carrying also gives us some kind of uh, perspective that that's good. Like because in the, the way I understand the story is like you come to find they find the uh, yeah they're frozen and they look down on him like straight the eyes basically. Yeah. Right? And I think that's kind of like a very important moment for the story a very important like a, a very important like experience that we want the player to have mm. so if if freak will have to carry him mm. she kind of has to get up close and we can have maybe get that experience for her as well like sorry to leave you on your own there freak um no that was kind of interesting that was the definitely that was the developers of the game talking about the situation that was kind of cool we have an inside to uh, they're thinking about the uh, situation and how to. Uh, uh, what's the best way of dealing with it, I guess? 
How's the cupboard coming along? Um, are there other people here? Uh, there's people in this room. I could hear them talking. I heard my name. Could Leroy, Victor and Marge have come back already? Um, I'm afraid not, my dears. They are most certainly still away. And besides, that room is simply a closet. Really? But I definitely could hear voices. The door was locked so I could, couldn't seem to see who it was. Ha! Huh. So sorry to be a thorn in your rose bush, but please don't fret, Frig. This house has lots of nooks and crannies. The winds can make all sorts of noises. Why I hear the strangest things on a daily basis. You're feeling okay though, right, Frig? Am I going crazy? Yeah, no, I'm totally fine. You're right, uh, it must have been the wind. Silly me. Well... It would appear there is something in this closet after all. There are some stowaway beverages in this closet. Shall we retire to one to the lake and enjoy one? I do very much enjoy a nice drink amongst friends. Sure, why not? Sounds lovely, Mr. Boo. Uh, seeing the lake sounds nice. Blended! Here we go again, drinking Nolan beer. Nolan beer. Ah, feel that fresh elk breeze in your face. I gotta say, at times like these, I wouldn't trade this island for the world. Here, here, my dear Jan. It has been a wonderful day spent with the two of you. Uh, but we never fixed your cupboard? Oh, that old thing? What value does a cupboard door have when compared to quality time spent with friends? Uh, well, I'll drink to that. It's true, I did have a lovely time. But it's also getting late. I might walk back if that's okay. Of course, my dear. My deepest gratitude for you coming by. I'll still around for another beer with Mr. Boo. The lake is looking really pretty tonight. I want to enjoy it just a little longer. I'll leave you both to that then. Thanks again for the day. Night, Frig. Farewell, dear Frig. Uh, don't fall in the lake, please, guys. Don't go drinking too many beers or just accidentally fall into the lake. Because I can see it's happening already. Oof. Mr. Boo's house was awesome. Still bothered by those voices though. Could they really have just been the wind? I mean, I have been drinking like every day. Hmm. Alright, let's go to bed. Get, let's get this dream out of the way. I'm beat. He's hoping I can go a night without another Lynchian dream. I don't think. I don't think we can. Nice of you to join us, Frig. Oh, it's the old, uh, the old man there. Anders? Wait, who are you with? Hey, you're that guy. Hi, Frig. This is my friend. I think you already met. We're just sharing some good traveling stories. But I've been asking about you. You were at my house, right? So I'm not crazy? Haha, <laughs> relax, Frig. Why don't you join in telling stories with us? Um, I guess I could do that. But I don't know if I have any stories to share. I'm sure you have plenty, Frig. Yeah. Everyone has a story to tell, Frig. It doesn't matter how big or small. As long as there's an audience, a story will always be heard. Yeah, let us be your audience, Frig. Um, okay, you guys. Sure. So this one time... Oh my god. What are you doing to me, brain? Okay, new plan. Today, no more beer. No beer, no weird dreams. Yeah, exactly. Let's see if we have another message in a bottle, and we do. These bottle messages keep coming. I wonder who's behind it. They're certainly dedicated. Alright, let's have a look. Uh, is it? Oh, meet Mr. Boo. Okay. That's his story. Uh, let's talk about Mr. Boo. Mr. Boo is one of a kind, a man who doesn't just generate one story but hundreds, even if most are probably rumors. It would be true to say Mr. Boo has a lot. He lives in a big house full of expensive bits and bobs. He owns a bar, which he only opens when he wants to hang out with his friends. He even has his own fire engine. He allegedly bought it so he could have his own fire brigade and help protect the islands. However, people suspect that it might have more to do with the fact that having your own fire brigade sounds pretty cool and means that you get to wear a red jacket pins with old medals you found at the flea market, something Mr. Boo enjoys doing frequently. 
But Mr. Boo is also generous, he loves to play with the piano and sing, and all, all are welcome to join when he does. At his bar he welcomes everyone with a smile and a free beer, whether they're rich or poor. At Mr. Boo's bar it's a pay what you want arrangement and usually the locals never really pay anything with anything other than their presence and good stories, unless they lose in the card game that is. Among the visitors at, of Mr. Boo's bar it's theorized that he opened it so he would never feel alone, but instead be surrounded by people who like him and have great thoughts about him. But how could Mr. Boo have a free bar, a big house and his very own fire brigade? You see, Mr. Boo is very rich because his dad, Mr. Nolan, was very rich. Mr. Nolan made a big selling beer with his own brewery on the island. In fact, the old man owed everything through that beer, employing most of the locals on building up shops and a school when before there was nothing. But as amazing as it all looked and as popular as Mr. Nolan was for what he was doing for the island, there was a hidden evil under the surface. A cruel man and his son knew it most of all. The young Mr. Boo feared his dad and he was sure to get a beating from him daily. His father was a petty man as Mr. Boo would grow and become older. Nolan would get more nervous than one that one day his son would be able to stand up to him and get revenge for his many years of tyranny. Preempting any sort of rebellion, he locked up Mr. Boo in the sheds. Mr. Boo would sit alone in the dark, small shack. How long he lived there he can't really remember, but he didn't spend this time planning for revenge. Instead, to keep his mind occupied, he would dream of all the nice things in life, like having a big house all to yourself, doing something important like being a fireman, or always having friends around you. Then one day, unexpectedly, Mr. Nolan died of uh, illness, which meant Mr. Boo was released from his prison. He was suddenly a free man, free from the shed and free from his father's cruelty. It's said that the people on the island often feel guilty about Mr. Boo's tragic childhood. Many claim not to have known, but maybe they have chosen to turn a blind eye because they had jobs and money, in big part thanks to Mr. Nolan. The aftermath, of course, was that Mr. Boo was not an only child, and therefore the sole benefactor of his father's inheritance. After years of living with nothing, he suddenly had everything. He didn't care about his father's legacy of the brewery, so he closed that. Instead, he got to have all the nice things in life, having a big house, being a fireman, and opening a bar to be welcomed by his all, all his friends, old and new. And he would welcome them all there with open arms. That's kind of... That's kind of cool that uh, Mr. Wu, after being able to... After all that cruelty bestowed upon him during his childhood, it's amazing that he turned out to be such a good uh, person. But anyways... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a quick break here and then when we come back we'll uh, have a no no beer day hopefully non-alcoholic day let's try at least thank you so much boys and girls for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye bye